Hi, my name is World Dane, and you're watching Impact Channel. Well, I've always wanted to do that. You know, in a perfect world, it would be the original band together to do it, but unfortunately, that can't happen right now. And for, you know, different reasons that probably shouldn't talk about. Uh, but it feels good because I think that, you know, it's a classic record. It was groundbreaking for its time. I mean, we were one of the first bands that started using, and this is thanks to Jeff, you know, started using the seven string guitars to make everything heavier. You know, it was before new metal. Well, maybe around the same time as new metal. But I think we did it better. <laughs> so it's cool. It's really cool to play the whole record in succession and the people fucking freak out on every song. <laughs> so it's, it feels good. No, and I can't tell you. We, it almost happened. It was this close. Okay. So. But I, I can't tell you why it did not happen. Yes. Dreaming Neon Black. Of course. Which, and this is my favorite of any record I ever did my whole life. Mm -hmm. My whole career. This is my favorite one because it's so special to me. Yes! Oh my god! I love that song! Wow! Yeah, of course I would love to play that song. I mean, that's one of... It's a B-side, but... It should have been on the record. But of course, you know, record company politics and everything that's involved... The, you know, well, we need an extra song for the Screw the Fans bonus record, that, so they have to buy it twice. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it will be on the upcoming solo record called Shadow Work. Um, the song is called As Fast As The Others. Um, it's a special story from when I was in school. I had a, f a friend who was uh, handicapped. When I first met him, we were maybe nine years old, ten, something like this, and he was using crutches, crutches. Um, the next year in school, he was in a wheelchair, and I was his, all the kids were so fucking mean to him. What kind of person teases someone? They can't help the way they are. And I was his only friend in school. And uh, that's what the song's about, basically. And, you know, when I first met him, we were walking to the lunchroom. And I said, hi, what's your name? We started talking. I think they're gonna close the lunchroom soon. We better hurry. And he said, I can't run as fast as the others. And I started to fucking cry. I was just a little kid. <laughs> and, but we made it. And we got lunch. And, um, yeah. I, I love, the, the thing that I love about writing lyrics is I always put things that are very personal and close to my heart into them. I don't want to sing about parties and drinking and fucking groupies. I think that people relate to emotions more than that shit. So, yeah. Well, Patricia Candace Walsh, that was her name, mm -hmm. 
she was with me in spirit. Um, she guided me, told me what to do every step. Maybe it's just in my mind, I could be crazy, but I felt her presence through the whole thing. Um, that was a hard record. That was very hard because it was so personal. It was like ripping my heart out and putting it onto a CD. Especially the last song, Forever. And I remember Neil Kernan, the producer, uh, at the last second, because that, that was the last thing, the last part of that record that was written. And I was together with Jim Shepard, and he's like, I have this bass part, listen to it. I'm like, okay. And I have the perfect lyrics. And I started to write the lyrics for Forever, the last song. And when we, when we went to Neil Kernan, he was like, are you fucking kidding me? You want to add one more song now at the very end? I'm like, yeah, it's important. It's the end of the story. And then when we were done recording it, he was like, oh my God, you guys were right. Sorry, I was maybe too judgmental when I said, you know, we don't have time to do it because this is perfect. Um, I love Neil. Kind of miss that guy. Haven't talked to him in a long time. He's a great producer. Huh? Well, I'm kind of immune to it at this point because I sing about so many personal things that I'm used to it, but the song Brother always fucks me up. <laughs> Some people think that that song is taken from a place of hate. It's not. That song is a love letter to my brother. Um, when I was when I was younger, my brother wasn't there. He he joined the military. He was away. Um, I grew up with my sisters. I have three sisters, and so I always wanted my brother to be there. But that it just didn't work that way. He was the oldest one, so he left. He left first, from, and I was the baby. So I was the last one to live with our parents. Um, and my sisters now are some of my best friends in the whole world. Value your family because that's all you have at the end. And your friends, but family is the most important. Well, I know he hears me. I mean, the line in the song when I say, if I could play God, do you know what I'd do? I'd swim through your blood and kill the cancer in you. He died from leukemia, blood cancer. I mean, I don't know if people know that, but that's where that lyric comes from. And ironically, I spoke to his wife um, just a few days ago, and we were talking about the song. She said she understood the message. She said thank you for that. Or, I don't know. It was it was a, a big emo moment. <laughs> the, big, the biggest lesson is the musician is the last in line to get paid for anything. Everyone before you, the record company, the manager, everyone gets paid before the fucking people that create the art. And that's wrong. That's the biggest lesson I learned. And there's no way to change it. It's, you know, the system is structured this way. The musician is always the last. Um, an amazing journey, at times difficult, at times amazing. I learned so many things. I discovered so many things. Sometimes I felt so lucky to be able to go through these experiences, to see the world, to perform for people. And sometimes I felt like, why the fuck am I doing this? This sucks. But there's a balance somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, 
<laughs> That's a hard one. If I met myself as a teenager, I'd say, get ready, it's going to be a rough ride. <laughs> Masturbation. <clears throat> Art is life. Art is what fuels life. Art is all around us, everywhere you look. I mean, look, someone designed this. We don't know who, or what, or why. Art is everywhere, and art is everything. Peter Steele from the grave. <laughs> Michael Ackerfeld. Um, Ozzy Osbourne. That'll never happen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Michael, I think, would be on that because I admire his bravery and his ability to explore different aspects of music and not care what people think about the past and always moving towards the future. He's the master of that. And the new Opeth record is fucking amazing. And there's gonna be haters. They always get the haters. And that just, it's just stupid. Musicians are here to create and expand, not to conform generally to what people expect. And that's what a true artist does. They expand and they grow throughout their career. And he's the master of that. States. Jesus fucking Christ on a rubber crutch. Um, we're doomed. <laughs> we're fucking doomed. <laughs> the world's going to hell. I don't, I'm, I won't, I mean, I know who I'm going to vote for, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, and this is very cliche to say, but, you know, you have to pick the, the less of the two evils. There's no third party that will ever come into power in the U.S. Never. It will never happen. And that's discouraging. Um, but... Uh, I don't know what to think about it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it. I, I, I don't know what people think about Donald Trump. I don't know what people think about Hillary Clinton. They're both fucked up. What do you do? <laughs> we don't have good choices. Um, but, you know, eventually you have to pick the one that's just a little bit less evil and wrong or fucked up or whatever they are. I don't know, but Donald Trump looks like a moron that has a dead squirrel dyed of an orange color on the top of his fucking head. And, uh, you know, hey, I want to vote for a billionaire, racist, bigot, misogynist who has ties to big business. Or I want to vote for someone that had like the scandal, all these scandals, and her husband got a blowjob. Who do you pick? <laughs> it's, it's so screwed up and it, it seems very surreal that this is the reality of the situation. <laughs> As a kid, things were a lot more simple. Um, God, if I could go back and be a kid again, that would be awesome. Because, you know, when you get old, older, when you mature, you become obviously more intelligent, but you also become more cynical, sometimes a little bitter about things you can't change. Um, being a child is a wonderful, wonderful time in life, and you can never go back. But it's a wonderful thing that you're gonna take with you forever. Um, I was lucky, I had great parents. Some, some kids aren't so lucky. Yeah, I mean, 
Watching CNN in the, in the U.S. is a lot different than watching CNN in Europe. It's way... CNN in the U.S. is way more slanted towards American politics. In Europe, it's completely different. You see things that you don't realize. But I think... I mean, you know, the world's fucked. We're all going to hell in a handbasket very soon. <laughs> I mean, you, I don't understand terrorism. I don't understand... Um, why people need to kill each other in the name of religion. You know, my God's better than your God, so I'm gonna fucking blow you up. Fuck you. Fine, kill yourself. Do the, do the world a favor. Just don't take anyone with you when you do it, asshole. That's what I would tell a terrorist if I met them. state of mankind at this moment is there okay there's always going to be good people there's always going to be bad people and there's always going to be people in between you can't change that it's been that way since the dawn of humanity um, you can't change it it's a struggle to even think that you can change it you know would it is it insane to think the world could change yes it is of Salvador Dali, the hallucinogenic Toreador, this piece of art. That was a good question. Uh, <laughs> I'm really happy with my answer. <laughs> I would like to meet Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung as well. Um, Albert Einstein. There's so many. Um, a mythical creature? Or mythological creature? Oh. I'd like to meet the Kraken. <laughs> and say, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen in our lifetime, but it will happen eventually, at some point. Where would I go? Hmm? I would like to visit Paris in the 1950s. I don't know why. After the tour, um, we're going to record the new solo record, um, and then I'm going to go home for some time, and then back to Brazil again, because my band lives there, and uh, I love Brazil. It's like my second home now, I think. Uh, but yeah, after the tour, I'm just going to relax for a little bit. That's all I can hope for. Number one, Pink Floyd, Rush, 2112, Carcass, Heartwork, Metallica, Ride the Lightning, and Judas Priest, Unleashed in the East. There is no meaning. That's the meaning of life. You're born, you die, and then you rot in the ground. <laughs> Who knows what happens after that, but all you can do is focus on being a good person and see what happens on the other side because the world's black. You don't know. Nobody can predict. And religion can't tell you what to do because all it is, religion is just a fucking control system. So there's, you know, maybe there's no afterlife. Maybe there is. You won't know until you're dead. That's the big fucking joke. Because if there is a God, He's got a really fucking black sense of humor. <laughs> Start your own religion, because the, one, the ones that we have right now, I don't think they're working so good. <laughs> Thank you very much for the interview. <laughs>